Hello everybody and welcome back to Guided Hacking, this is for HK and today we're going to be going over RE101, a challenge within the Cyber Defenders collection of challenges which you can use to improve your malware analysis skills and your incident response skills. Within this challenge we're going to be going over six questions and trying to answer them after we take a look at the files which have been provided to us. So let's get started. So I have our questions here and our files open in my VM. We can see that question one points to the file malware 000. So this file here, and it says, I've used this new encryption I heard about online for my wares. I bet you can't extract the flag. Let's take a look at this file and try to find the flag. I've opened up the file within Detect It Easy. We can see that it's using the library of glibc and was compiled with GCC for Ubuntu. So before I take this into something like a decompiler or a debugger, I'm going to first check the strings because that always might contain some easy low hanging fruit. So we'll go into the strings and we can scroll through these. There's not too much except already scrolling down, I can see that it has what looks like a base64 string. So I'm going to copy this string and keep that for later. And a few other things, it says you've been owned and some more strings common with a Linux binary, but we're not too interested in those. So let's take this basic for string into Cyberchef and see what it might be. Just before I paste this into Cyberchef, you can tell that this is a base64 string because of this equal sign padding at the end. It's not always a complete 100% telltale sign, but usually it will be a base64 encoded string, especially within the context of this. So let's take that string and we'll place it into Cyberchef and we can see with the from base 64 recipe, we get the flag of, oops, I used to delete B64 encryption. So instead of doing the middle questions, I've decided to skip them because they're quite boring and we'll move on to question four. Question four points to the file unzip me and it states that I zipped flag.txt and encrypted it with the password password, but I think the header got messed up. You can have the flag if you fix this file. Now this is a common CTF question and usually what you'll be doing is you'll be fixing the file header within the file. So here is our zip broken and we can open that within the hex editor and look at the file. Now, usually you'll pull up something like the documentation of the file header and then check it against what the different values are meant to be. A common one is this 54B0304, which is the file signature as the first four bytes. And sometimes these are wrong. Usually reads as PK in the decoded text and sometimes that's changed. Now, what you will want to do if you're doing this on your own is go through each of these different values and it has a nice graph for you to see where you should be looking within the hex editor and checking them with what they should be containing. Now going through, we see a hint to our answer here because it specifies some extra information. It says, I zipped flag.txt. Now going over flag.txt, we can see that it's eight characters long. And looking in the structure of a zip header, we can see at one of the last parameters, there is file name length. So this is at OA and OB. So we can go at OA and OB on the second row and we see that it contains 5858, which has the integer value of 88. But we don't actually want something that is 88 characters long for a file name length when we know the file name length for flag.txt is only eight characters. So instead we can replace this with 0800 and that'll define it as a length of eight. And we can save that, we can go into the file and we can extract it with password password and we'll get our flag out. It does still have a few little issues in that file, but we can ignore them because we've got the information. Let's move on to the next question. But before we look at the question, make sure to check out Guided Hacking. Moving on to question five, it points to the file malware 101 and says, apparently my encryption isn't so secure. I've got a new way of hiding my flags. So let's go and check out that file. We see that it is a binary for Linux and looking at the strings, we don't see too much scrolling down. We see nothing to see here. This is quite weird and we may wanna check that out. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up in a decompiler. We can see our entry in the binary and we can see a call to libc start main with the offset of main. This is our main function. Going in, we can see that string of nothing to see here that we saw previously. And then below it, we see a stack string. So to retrieve this stack string, you can either run this binary within Linux and set a debugger on the call printf and then just echo out this RBP from the stack and you'll get the stack string, or you can use this Mandiant plugin, which will do it for you. Now, once you run or do either of these processes, you'll get the following flag. And we can move on to our last question, which is question six. It has the file of malware 201. Ugh, I guess I'll just roll my own encryption. I'm not good at math, but it looks good to me. So I'm going to open up this file within my decompiler and we can check out the self-rolled encryption. Going into the decompiled output, it's another Linux binary. So we'll go into libc start main, jump into main, ignore some of these messages and we're met with our main. So within this, we can see that it prints out the encrypted flag is, then it will just put in a message, encrypt it with this function here and print that out. So going into the encryption function, it's quite easy to understand. It calls call lock at the start and then goes through the length of the input, which is going to be the size of A2. Before we go on to look more about the encryption, we want to quickly check what these two parameters are. So going back in the decompilation, we can see that they're my message and V5, which is the length of my message. So it will be the actual encrypted flag itself and then the length of the encrypted flag. And we can see at the top of the main function, we see the encrypted flag is, and this is referencing these unknown bytes here. And these unknown bytes are the encrypted flag. So I can click on these, go into my hex view, and from 6D all the way down to here, we just need to copy from there. And I've already done this and put this into my sublime text, which we'll be bringing into CyberChef in just a second. Then we'll go back into that encryption routine and try to understand it a little bit more. So it goes through, it, co it counts up through the string and what it'll do is it will create a byte here which is just counting and incrementing a zero and XOR that against the byte within a one which is our input data and this character here signifies a shift right of one so in conclusion, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be XORing the flag with the XOR key, which is generated here, which is just incremental of A0 for the length of the encrypted data, and then shifting that right. And we can then just generate our XOR key by incrementing this for the size of the array. So I've already done this here. So we start at A0 and we just increment that up until it matches the size of our encrypted data. So now what we need to do is we need to recreate this within something like CyberChef so that we can decrypt our data. So we'll go into CyberChef. And we'll start with from hex because we want to take in our encrypted data and we can copy in that input there. So we'll put that into CyberChef. And then what we want to do is we want to first carry out the XOR because that's the first operation done. And we want to put in our key, which is just that increment in the length of the encrypted data. And we can put that in. And lastly, we want to do that bit shift right with a length of one. And we can see that we get our last and final flag of malware encryption is shit. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was a good walkthrough of one of the challenges on the Cyber Defender site. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, a like would help a lot and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. If you haven't already, check out guidedhacking.com for a step-by-step -step introduction to game hacking and an ever-growing catalogue of content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.